Game one of our 2021 Spring LCK Final, and already it's what we were kind of expecting. This is what we were thinking about. The focus on Ruler on the bottom side of the map is already two of his champions have been taken away. And I'm expecting to see a Senna or a Hacker and Ban come out as well, but I was wondering about is what is Delmon Kia going to do? Because they've been super diligent about banning Renexin and Fresh every single time. Whoa, this but they completely throw that previous draft plan into the trash can and go for a completely uh, different approach, which allows you to first pick the Ude without the fear of the Olaf counter pick. Yeah. Uh, and most importantly, don't give Ruler any of his two comfort picks. Well, now you have the Thresh open here as well, though. So now you have to make a choice if you're down one Kia. And they have re re very consistently gone towards the Udir first pick here. It gives you a lot of control over Vision. It's also going to be a champion that allows Canyon to really control the mid lane with. He likes to roam there. He likes to look for picks there. And is going to put the Temple into their favor early on. Well, we'll see exactly what happens is, of course, the Nidalee Renekton is available, Aphelios Thresh also available, but Senna Tom Kench has been left up as well, so Damwon Kia can head towards that right now. And I would not be surprised to see him go for that. Uh, I do think that the Aphelios will be able to consistently fight uh, aggressive pressure and uh, uh, priority in that lane and able well, to... <laughs> okay, we well, go. never mind that. And this is a brilliant move by Damwon Kia because one of the risks of running into an Aphelios with Sana is that a wave clear is not necessarily as good. But if you combine it with Barrel's Heimerdinger, a lot of those problems goes away and you can't hook if there's a turret in front of you. No, you certainly yeah. cannot. And we're going to see the Graves come through as a response to the Udir now. So a lot of range damage on the side of Gen G. But I feel like this, this Senna Heimerdinger is really going to throw a little bit of a curveball here to Gen G. It's difficult to lane into this. But how it scales later on to the game is going to be interesting to see as well. We see the Akali ban here. With Udir, often we see a lot of players right now going towards the Zoe in mid lane because you have a lot of extra vision control. You're very safe in the mid lane with the Zoe pick there with the Udir. So curious to see if Gen G decide to take that away now from Showmaker. It's one of his top picks as well, his second most played this season. Yeah, what I'm thinking about is the top lane, right? It's been completely ignored for this point in time outside of that Narban that has been taken away by Gen G. Will it be just Beefcakes there towards the top side and is the Cho'Gath going to be part of the problem? And something that Gen G has done in that past draft is they saved the counter pick for Rascal and then they still just pick a tank. It's just to make sure that Khan doesn't blind picks up or like doesn't get the counter pick, get something like a Jace into a Cyan where you know that Khan is going to bully that lane. Um, but you can't blind pick that, right? So by saving that top lane pick and picking something like a Syndra if it's not banned away and Orianna here for BDD on R4, that means you can use your R5 for a very comfortable tank matchup. And if Khan goes for something aggressive, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Well, this could just be an indication that we're seeing Damwon Kia heading towards the Scion pick once again. But you don't really need that strong of a frontline with this comp already. Heimerdinger is going to give you a lot of extra frontline power in a lot of these team fights. You have good range with the Senna already. You don't necessarily need to pick the Scion here, but it is a safe pick they could go with. And it's going to be BDD who gets the first Syndra here of this best of five. And he had a great performance against T1. Let's see if we can see those Scar of the Weeks once again. Yeah, this is actually really interesting because we might actually get the Zoe versus Syndra matchup. Yeah that both of these players were talking about in the trash talk is Sion, there we go. That's the blind pick. I think the Trogath band gave that one away. And now, Damon, what is their answer to the Syndra? Certainly a lot of interesting ones, but we're not expecting it. Victor is going to be the choice here by Showmaker. And I quite like that. I think the Victor, even though it's not the most interesting There's of matchups. <laughs> yep. yep. Beefcake versus Beefcake. <laughs> That's uh, that's what we're getting here for game number one. Gen G looking like a very Gen G draft, and Damwon Kia similar on their side. But if you have a look at these straight down the line, both of them a lot of late game power. But where do we put it, gentlemen? Chronicler, I mean, do we think this is exactly what Gen G needed? Is it enough against Damwon Kia? I think there is a lot of power here, but. If BDD or Ruler, either of those doesn't get a hat, I'm afraid that in the long run, even with how strong their engage and pick potential is, you're gonna have issues actually being able to do damage consistently against these long range carries coming through from the Victor and the Senna. Combined with the Heimerdinger makes it so much harder to actually get your Aphelos in a position I, where he's able to get through them. I look at this and I think Damwon Kia has such a tough comp to break through, right? Like, even if you get that great Scour of the Week, who are you hitting? Who are you killing here? Even if you try to make the clutch plays, you try to look for the hook, you're going to have such a, a hard problem actually getting that to connect. Even the Call of the Forge God coming through from Warren, it's just going to be so difficult. Sure, both of these teams scale well into the late game, but I feel like Don Juan Kia's comp kind of plays itself, right? It's so easy to execute, and this is the best 5v5 front-to-back team fighting comp that we have in this league and potentially in the world, the defending world champions. I look at this draft and I think this is impossible to crack, even with what Genji have put together. 
I don't know if I'd necessarily agree with impossible to crack, because if you look at the uh, the 2v2 in terms of jungle power, like in the early levels, a Graves and a Syndra, if you hit an early scatter, if you find that play, if you set it up, you can actually um, demolish anyone on the side of the Monkey, all right? You can actually set up these plays with life on the fresh. The hook into the scatter, into the kill is something we've seen them do again and again. Well, we'll see exactly what happens here. Both of these teams going for a lot of scaling as we have a look. Gen G ready to get onto the rift for game number one of this final. Life just getting ready, getting all of the audio things sorted out as I think maybe we are do, do have a slight delay moving into game one. Of course, this is something that we are very used to and I assume it's an audio delay <laughs> because Probably. of course, 75% of the time, that's precisely what it is. But you can see our refs getting to it ASAP to make sure we can get into our first grand final match. Well, I think it's really interesting what you mentioned, Chronicler, earlier about, you know, the clutch potential that you have if you do hit the stun into the hook, right? Or if you're able to hit the hook into the stun, I think it's, it can definitely work. It's just so difficult to pull that off, right? It's going to have to be the clutch factor we saw in that semifinals once again from these players. Well, we'll just have to see how it's going to go. I think that we are almost getting ready to get through here. But you can see Life still having to explain a few of these things. I think that uh, actually the fact that Senna and uh, the Heimerdinger at this time, I think a lot of people were expecting the Tom Kench. I think that getting through might not necessarily be the greatest news to Gen G fans, just because they don't then get that straight up 2v2, which I think is like almost something that they would be relying on as far as just smashing a matchup. The upside of this though is that Barrel will not have the impact that he normally does. Barrel, in my opinion, is scariest on things like Leona, on Alistair. When he gets to roam around the map, set up plays with the rest of his team, play off Showmaker's priority, play off Canyon who loves to invade, loves to play aggressive and go for early objectives. And that is something that with the Heimerdinger you actually won't be able to do. So I'm looking at the strong early game that Genji showed against their uh, in their series against D1, because there are definitely tools in this composition that allow you to get ahead early. Yeah, there certainly are. I mean, there are ways to set up stuns and kills. If you see some roaming coming through from life, for example, that is something that, that could give them an edge, right? And they could be able to put a little bit of kill pressure on the mid lane. But I, I'm worried that, you know, with the drafting style we're already seeing here from Genji in game one, you're trying to play a scaling game into a team that is very happy to play late in almost every situation. They have one late game with drafts where they're behind early with a comp that is supposed to be strong in early game. And I feel like if we had sped up the tempo, if we played towards a faster style of Genji, I would have liked that more going into a best of five like this and already Damwon Kia are changing the way this draft is being played right they're picking Heimerdinger which feels weird but we've seen it before from Barrel already this season it's not like this is the first time this has happened it's been seen a lot in scrims right it's very popular nowadays and this isn't a huge curveball it just feels like Damwon are trying to play standard late game and that's scary well we'll see exactly how it's going to go as ladies and gentlemen we are ready to get into game number one of the LCK Spring Final. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rift. Here we are for game number one. Both of our teams choosing a bit of scaling as the flavor for our first game. And I just want to go into a bit of mentality, a little slight rant, just a little one, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> because, of course, I think that having the onus on you to be proactive in a final that is so high pressure when emotions are running high, choose scaling. I think it is so intelligent. Gen.G did it very, very well against T1 in their first game. And uh, now both of these teams are going in that direction for this one. And I think from a psychological perspective, it's a good way to play. Because if you have pressure on you to make action, as well as the pressure on you of being in a final, it can compound. Yeah, it certainly can. And this is a team that has struggled in best of fives for Gen G. If you end up messing up the execution of this game, I mean, I, I feel like it's not only me who's feeling this. I mean, we've seen both coaches for both of these teams kind of say it feels like if Gen G wins it, it has to be a one-sided series. and. Um, you're, you're putting a lot of pressure on these players who did perform in the T1 series, but this is a different beast. This is a grand finals for Gen.G. Yeah, and I actually think that bringing out the coaches is really interesting, right? Koma and Odin have been up against each other for many, so many, many years, right? Like, of course, not last year because Koma took a year off and, uh, you know, traveled the world just a little bit. Um, but now he's back and both of these guys certainly having a lot of experience against one another. And it's also always something that gives extra depth. And we you know these a lot of these players are so experienced, right? And they've played with each other, they played against each other. And to then see them in the finals is really exciting, I think. If I look at where the actual action, in my opinion, is supposed to happen early on, I want to see Clid try and play around BDD 
in the mid lane here. We know how easy it is for Syndra to get that early prio, and if Clid can use that to maybe put some pressure on Canyon to force a flash on Showmaker early, it opens up a lot of possibilities around that first dragon. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that, you know, Canyon is not the type of player who likes to play bodyguard, right? He's not the type of player who likes to defensively gank when these sort of plays happen. So you can bet the Showmaker is going to be left on his own quite a bit here in the mid lane in a matchup where there is kill pressure with the ability to scatter the weak here for BDD. So I do agree. I think the mid lane is going to be the most interesting part of this early game by far. Well, you can see already BDD with a bit of a shove towards that mid lane. As far as the jungle is going, of course, Udia is going to have that. Uh, clear advantage, and so he's going to be moving towards his red buff a little bit earlier than what Clid's going to be able to do, but I think it's after the first clear that things will get interesting when it comes to that jungle with that extra time that Canyon may have around the map to try and get something done potentially. As uh, you can see, Ruler and Life spending some time underneath their turret because, of course, uh, Senna Heimerdinger is revolting. We did, unfortunately, didn't manage to make it work. However, Darmon Kia, let's see whether they can. It's yeah. uh, something that's so hard to deal with in terms of priority, right? Because the Heimerdinger turrets um, kind of solve one of the few issues that Senna does have, especially if you combine it with something like a Tom Kench, which is what traditionally is done. Um, because it makes it so much harder for you to actually shove in consistently, especially against an Aphelios. So, uh, this is the man with the most solo kills. Uh, so I'm, I'm yeah. going to be, even though it's too beefy, boys, I'm going to be looking towards that top side. Um, <laughs> but I want to see Genji find a way to actually deal with this, because if Ruler and Life are going to be stuck on the Retorid, a big part of what makes this roster so dangerous is, in my opinion, going to be fully neutralized. Yeah, that, and I think that's part of what this draft comes through with, right? I mean, you're, you're willing to give up the Thresh, but you have the Heimerdinger. You're going to have that lane priority. You know that Life isn't going to be able to roam when he's stuck under turret. They also got the Rift Scuttler on the bottom side of the map, so they have a lot of extra vision. So they can feel very safe actually pushing up this aggressively when they have that vision advantage on the bottom side of the map. So it feels like everything's kind of going according to plan here for Damwon. Yeah, and also, like, if you remember, like, Think about the hardest champions to gank in League of Legends. <laughs> Which one's literally at the very top of that list? It is 100% Heimerdinger. You walk towards those turrets, and it is largely a death sentence. And unfortunately for Gen G, yes, they have the ability name, but they do not have the Heimerdinger. So it is certainly something that they're going to have to think about. And uh, getting a Heimerdinger out of position is how you take him down. So in this lane, I think it might be something that Gen G just ignore and try to get advantages elsewhere. The one upside, of course, for the Genji comp is that even though I think in terms of range, it's going to be a little bit harder for them to get stuff done, um, they can be fine. Uh oh, a little bit overextended. Yeah, BDD in a bit of trouble. Gravity Field goes down. Not going to get the stun just yet, but the follow flash. BDD on the wrong side of the map as now he's running through these Raptors, and now it's a wild goose chase. He does have the Blast going as Canyon avoids it, but now, um, yeah, I mean, look. You are getting away, slowly but surely. Is it going to be the execute? No, it is not, as uh, not enough time had passed, and Showmaker picks up first blood in the end. And this is the kind of you know moment where you have to give respect to the Udir pick, right? If you don't know where Canyon is, you can't be pushed up that far. I get the idea here is I'm Syndra, I have better range, I have a lot better poke than Victor at this stage of the game. I can harass, I can get that extra pressure on. But when you know your jungler is away, if you push that far, you're taking a risk, and he gets punished for it big time here. And for Gen G, uh, one of the ways that in the T1 series they were able to actually make T1 suffer, right, and make T1 have problems is that their laning was super consistent, that they were not getting ganked, that they were able to find leads just purely for laning. It's not happening right now. Yeah, and if you remember back to that series, BDD didn't die once until game three. Yeah. Like, this is a very different start to how that series went. First Blood already. Uh, is going to be against BDD and see how Genji are going to deal with it. That's also going to be the first Drake, right? So that gives you Drake priority, Drake advantage here going into a mid game. And those the Drakes that we have left with this being an Ocean Drake to start things off, I mean, unless it ends up being a Cloud Soul, which, you know... <laughs> it's not. So it that's be. fine. Oh, there yeah. you go. It's, that's right. It did pop up there. So it's not a Cloud Soul, in fact. So both of these are actually massively important, right? So. This, this advantage could be huge for Dom Kia because they already have, in my opinion, the, the better and easier to execute team fighting comp for later on. They have this extra advantage in terms of getting to that very important final soul. And I mean, Flash not used for Showmaker either, by the way. So he's still very safe in the mid lane. This is only one kill, but it leads to so much more. And it could lead to another kill, potentially, because Canyon walking on the, in there, of course, uh, Showmaker can close the distance with his flash if he would like to, but also means that now Darmon Kia can play with a lot more pressure here in mid. And we mentioned that mid lane is going to be very, very important. I think that Genji can't rely on bot pressure alone, and especially not in this game. We'll see how they are going to be able to bounce back 
from this situation as it looks like it's being cleared. Trying to focus a little bit on farming things out and Genji now moving their bottom lane top in order to try and get some of that Herald priority. Now, this is a really early rotation though and I think they will be able to get the shove. In terms of 1v2 potential, I personally give the edge to the Sai, although it is really hard into this matchup. Ruler, he's looking for some plates, but with Khan ultying in, I don't actually expect him to get a lot going. And if they pick up this early Herald and they're able to turn back the gold lead in their favor, uh, it's looking a lot better for Genji. They need the yeah. setup, though. They need that Herald, because if they don't, I mean, this is obviously a very big mismatch. You, know, you can see already Rascal struggling a lot more. The turrets are just going to naturally push this and even add a little bit of extra poke damage on the Rascal when he tries to trade back and even last hit these minions. He's losing CS. He's losing turret plates here. And so you have to get this Herald. <laughs> they're rotating over for the Herald, but they need this. Yeah, Barrel actually looking for a potential dive right now as there's the Onhorn Ghost already flashing as Rascal turns it the other way, but this is not working out how he wanted as Beryl's tanking the turret for the moment. Doesn't take that last shot as Rascal looks to be okay, but the turret is disintegrating. He's lost his flash here too, and look, I mean, they are trying to make this Herald play happen, but they were a little bit slow on it, a little bit of happy feeding there on the top side of the map. I actually think that Genji rotated too early, and because of that, um, yes, they will get the Herald, they might get plates, but you give up so much more if you keep Ruler and life in that lane for a little bit longer, you might be able to get the swap, get the Herald without giving up this many plates, because now any gold that you get from the Herald has already been paid. Yeah, and also guess who's coming up, right? Canyon is going to come and join this. Clear is not going to be able to just launch this for free. In fact, he's going to really struggle to get in there and actually drop this Herald. So you might not get those plates at all, at least not for a long time here. Canyon is absolutely ready to steal us away. Yeah, you can see actually after Clid right now, as end of the line comes down, Canyon just going to ignore the graves and take away the shellfish. Now going to move up and looks to see whether he can defend Khan, who has not even lost 50% of his health bar. He should be absolutely fine, as now we're just looking to clear out this minion wave, and pressure has dissipated. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, turret's first turret gone. goes down. Yeah, turret's already gone here, so yeah, you will get this charge off here, but you're not going to be able to really do anything else. The Herald's going to get cleared so quickly, and now you've got a jungle on this side of the map which is not accomplishing much. Meanwhile, look at the mid lane, you know? <laughs> BD's pushed out, and this is such a rough spot for Genji to be in macro-wise. And this is something that Dom and Kia, uh, in my opinion, didn't really show in the first round of plays against Hanwha Live. That's why they showed some weaknesses, but we know how good this team can be uh, when they are up early on. And it's not just the mid-game macro, it's even the early game macro, right? The first play goes well. There's a 30 CS advantage for Ka uh, Canyon right now into Clid. And sure, Clid will always be relevant later in the game, um, but it's not a position that you really want to be in as Gen.G, where you're already at the 2k gold deficit against a team that is so incredibly strong at closing out leads. The one upside is the Gen.G comp is really good at playing defensive. With that, Aphelios makes it really hard to force. Yeah, the thing that I'm looking at is which one of these teams is okay the most when it comes to just scaling up, getting to a late game. Like on one side, you've got ornaments that come in that inflate the amount of stats that you have on your team. Aphelios, phenomenal at getting that consistent damage in the late game, depending on which guns he's got. But then you look over the side of Darmon Kier, you have literally the best tank in the game, which is Scion. And then you have Sema, Senna and Heimerdinger. Senna yeah. infinitely scales, right? Like, and will also get more and more range, more and more power as the game goes on. I don't know whether it's enough of a trade-off here for Gen.G. Yeah, I, I don't think so, you know? And, and that's kind of what I was saying in, in the parts of the draft, right, when we were looking at how this comp is going to scale up. And when they picked the Orn pick, it's not a shock that Gen.G would round off the draft with that. But unfortunately, just making these... Oh, hold that thought, Clid. Yeah, Clid thought that it was his jungle, but Canyon's trying to convince him otherwise. His Ghost just going to get popped. BDD comes round the corner, and that's an overstep from the center. And that might lead to a Drake coming in here. And as Genji, you want to even up that Drake out. You have the Hard Engage available, because if you let Dumb Monkey get ahead in Drakes, your late game becomes way more strenuous. Yeah, you have to... For I mean, if you're not ahead on Drakes when that soul roll runs around, we don't know which one it's going to be yet, but obviously both of the options are huge here. If you don't have that advantage, that means that Dom Kia can just sit back and force every fight on their terms. Clid, yeah. two levels down. Yeah, a little bit out of position here as BDD over to the side. Life is going to come in. Dawning Shadows th flies through, but doesn't really do too much. As now Ruler is desperate to try and get this last little bit of turret before those turret plates do fall down. That turret has been such an enemy of Gen.G. There's yeah. been so many resources to try to finish it off. The fact that Ruler is here and not at this Drake means they cannot contest it. And they're not getting anything else on the map. I mean, look at where Thresh and Graves are right now. They're rotating over looking for a pick, but I don't know if this is coming through. Turret's still up. I'm pretty sure the turret will go down here. I think the problem with Genji not going for the Drake was more the position that the rest of the map was in, because you do have to kind of hard force it. 
uh, if you want to try and get it before Ghost comes back, because the death times at this point in time are still so short. And that is a risk that you take. Gen.G clearly going, uh, holding the opinion that if they get into late game, they're still fine. The important thing is, thanks to the kill from BDD and the turret being picked up, the gold lead now negligible. Yeah, no, it is completely tied up here. Only 400 in it, which means about nothing, especially when we factor in that both of these teams want to be playing for about that 30 minute mark to really hit their stride as we are going to check this one out once again. Just a really proactive play once again from BDD here. Over the wall, pops, pops his ultimate here, and the Scout of the Week is actually what finishes him. He just knows he has that extra damage, comes in and punishes that overextension. And BDD, you know, a very mental player to get an, an extra early kill here this early on after that very unfortunate pick. Uh, you know, that we did see Canyon get is a nice bounce back for him. It also means that the pick potential that is available for Gen G remains way more relevant than it otherwise would be, uh, as Canyon might get caught here. Yep, Scatter the Week comes down. Clid not actually opting in for anything. Showmaker could have rotated up, is now speaking of uh, rotations. We've got some teleports coming in here. Barrel and Ghost getting closed in on. There's a teleport to come through from Khan. Is unfortunately Rascal. Oh, he does find it actually in the end, but he gets blown up. And this is the problem. There were turrets down, and this was the setup that, of course, the Heimerdinger wanted and cleared. He's just going to have to collaterally damage him himself away. Teleport disadvantage. You know, you come into this situation thinking you're actually up a member, you know, and as Gen G. But what objective are you really looking for here? You're just looking for a pick, and Damwon and Kia sniff it out so early, so easily. Get those teleports through. You end up trading a kill in your advantage, and now you're going to get a turret. It's also pre-item spike, right? We see Kled now pick up the shield though. BDD doesn't actually have his first item finished yet either. So that's a couple of extra items that can really help you in a skirmish like that. You saw the damage that was done, even at the back end of that fight, thanks to the nice scatter. And if you have your items finished, if you're a little bit more cohesive there, if Rascal doesn't teleport quite that deep, you might be able to salvage that. And this is not really necessary from Genji. You don't need to force like that. And uh, one thing that we haven't actually spoken about yet is you just saw Ruler teleport in towards the top side of the map. Do you guys have an opinion on the uh, the lack of a more defensive summoner spell and instead going for more of this proactive Mac mov movement style of, uh, of summoner? I think against Damwon Kia it makes a lot of sense because the team that sets this team apart above everything else, because I actually think that G in terms of like raw team finding power can match them, is their macro, right? It's yep. how they're able to trade early, how in the mid to late game they will sometimes give up things, but they will always get more in return. And we've seen them do this every single time. And a teleport helps you alleviate that, and you're not actually that at risk against this center Heimerding lane. You get pushed yeah. in, sure, but the kill threat is negligible. I mean, it allows you to be more relevant on the map early as well. And, you know, we've seen so many times that Aphelios rotation to the top Ooh. lane, so much damage here. Yeah, Showmaker actually forced a flash from underneath this turret as Chaos Storm was traded, but, but Canyon looks to be taking Shirley pretty comfortably. Yeah, this by is himself. not just a, a K Ram we're watching here. This is a lot of pressure in mid to actually allow Canyon to try to take this away. Genji sniff it out though. Yep, they rotate over. Control ward there. Going to be cleared here by Clid to the best of his ability. All five members of both teams milling about in the river. BDD down to about half life. In a bit of trouble as the train is going to park itself into the wall, but it does buy exactly the right amount of space for Damwon Kia to secure this, the Rift Terror. This is Damwon Kia in a T, right? You, you you push mid, you do a, you use a lot of resources. You use a Scion ult to cut them off, and you just are able to, by the skin of your teeth, pull a Rift Herald out of a hat here. And that's what Damwon Kia does so well. You take a small edge in the mid lane, and you turn it into such a huge advantage. I do think that the double teleport, or the double summoner usage there is something that may come to bite him. And here we see uh, the double teleport, as pointed out, is a really big problem here. Rascal also, crucially, hasn't hit the levels where he gets the upgrade on his mythic, so he's not that insanely tanky on that we know we're going to see later in the game. And there you also see that scatter hits. Yeah, sure. Uh, the collateral damage, it's nice, but they're not, they haven't hit their spikes yet. They haven't actually converted that gold, meaning that if you get kills there, it all of a sudden that play flips around, right? And Gen G, they're very hungry here, but the gold lead still relatively even. I think this mountain fight is going to be super pivotal for both of these two teams. And if, if Dom and Kia get this mountain drink, I mean, that almost locks up every single team fight for the rest of the game. They're always going to have the ability to, to take it on their terms, right? They will never have to force a fight. They'll be willing to give Gen G the opportunity to take just one mountain drake instead of the soul, right? So this is really important for Gen G to take that momentum away now. But look at where everyone is positioned on the map here for Dom and Kia. They're already grouped up. They already have vision advantage. Rascal's cut off. Like, yep. This seems almost untakeable for Genji right now. Yeah, he's off towards the side. Rascal is going to try and get himself back in. Bella's breath does deny some of the CC. Is Clid and BDD in position. BDD can see charging up for that potential ultimate. But the Herald is used, right? This is straight out of a textbook. 
from Damwon Kia, trying to get all of that control as Canyon is going to get collateral damage to the face, but they have a center. They have all of the extra regen on their side, and Canyon, he will be back up to health in a uh, in pretty short time as these Piercing Darknesses start to come in. But Genji, they have position. There's the Moonlight Vigil. Gravitum's going to help out as well. Ornhorn gets a triple knockup as the Dawning Shadow lands on to rule. And now Zamon Kia trying to get back into this team by Canyon. Out of it already. The Scion is dead. Down to zombie mode. And Clid secures the dragon. Genji have extraordinarily low health bars. Zamon Kia cannot find it though. They cannot find the chase. And they'll be denied the Drake and denied a kill. And ladies and gentlemen, I give you Damwon Kia. The fight is perfect for Genji. I mean, the opening of that fight is about as good as you can ask for. It's about as be the best engage you could ever get. And yet still Damwon Kia end up trading it back, end up tying up the fight and got control over the Drake pit. Sure, they did not get the Drake and that's massive. Genji do have that extra buffer now. But if you see a fight start off this well for Genji and it still ends up even, you got to be really worried about how it's going to go later on. That's the ruler difference, baby. He finds the <laughs> insane ultimate because two ultimates were already used, right? They blow everything trying to kill Clint, but then this setup is beautiful and this is what I'm looking forward to see what in these late game team fights is going to happen. Both Khan and Rascal are trying to do the same thing, but the Aphelios is insane at shredding down tanks even this early on, doesn't even have his Lord Dominix yet, and then the secure from Clint. Because Canyon is so low, he can't quite walk up as much as he usually would, and that means that this game is going to remain close, um, at least till the next Drake fight. Yeah, I actually think that that is extraordinarily pivotal for keeping Genji in this game. As we can see, gold lead, gigantic for the uh, Aphelios, but this is, of course, the very confusing fasting center situation, so we're going to ignore that <laughs> everywhere else. Extraordinarily close, right? Yeah. Khan has a slight advantage on the top side, but otherwise, nothing to write home about. I think the Heimerdinger pink was just so perfect because it slows down a lot of what Aphelios can do in lane. He usually, you know, is often getting more turret plates than he's able to get. I think that's part of why you see the teleport here as well, so they get a fast track to the lane swap. But unfortunately, that turret in the top side was traded, and they weren't able to take it out until so long into the game that the Aphelios isn't as online as he would like to be at this stage in the game. If he does have that Lord Dominic's regard a little bit faster in this game, maybe the next Drake fight can actually be one that Genji could hope to take. But at this stage in time, even with that perfect engage from Rascal after the Moonlight Vigil comes out, Tom Wanky are able to turn around. And I'm worried about how well Genji can actually fight these scrappy fights, even with a good engage. What happens when the engage is bad? What happens when you actually have Khan flanking and somebody gets caught? I mean, how do you win those fights? That's what I'm most concerned about here. I actually think that the primary engage for Dumb Kia is not nearly as consistent because uh, Science engage, and we've seen this a couple of times happen already, is incredibly telegraphed, right? I think and generally is the strongest when he's a secondary initiator, when he has something like an Alistair that can just bull rush in and then follow up with the lockdown. Uh, whereas, obviously, Orn, uh, yes, ornaments are insane, but like the fact that Call of the Forge God is long range, non committal, insane engage that. Uh, can just find backlines basically guaranteed. And it segues so well into a scatter the week, right? Is, I think, uh, something that will keep Gen G relevant throughout the entirety of this game, even with the race yeah. advantage. Yeah, the thing that I want to mention, though, is the fact that I don't think Damwon Kia ever really want to engage. They have a Heimerdinger composition. What they're trying to do is establish vision control around their objectives that they're looking for and then make Gen G come to them. And then if Gen G do, then they have to walk into exactly. Heimerdinger, which is extraordinarily difficult to deal with. I think so much of this hinges on who's going to have that vision. And that's where the Udir comes into play, right? Because the Udir is so great at clearing vision. I mean, speak of the devil, he's going in right now and taking a lot of this away. He's getting a lot of extra information as they posture around this Baron pit. And Baron is up, and it's something that can be rushed down by Dom and Kia. They don't have an insane rush speed on it just yet, but it is pretty quick with the Heimer here. So Genji have to respect this lack of vision. While they have this vision control, they're allowed to give Showmaker a turret. Why not? Because there's no way that anyone can catch him off guard here when you have this much vision control. The last Drake fight that Genji took, they actually were able to wrestle positional advantage away. If Vision does go to Damwon Kia and they actually have that set up first on some of these objective fights, that's what I'm worried because that's when you're going to struggle to get value out of Rascal's ult. And what I love is that Ruler went for the um, Rapid Fire Cannon here because one of the issues that he will have as the Aphelios is range. Aphelios is really strong when people are trying to engage into him, but against the Senna, a Heimerdinger, a Victor, that's not going to happen nearly as much. Sure, it's nice to pump up those damage numbers and attack Khan, right? Yep, like, you yep. always feel good about that yeah. afterwards. <laughs> but you actually want to win the game and I think that the rapid fire kind of provides you with a little bit more especially as we saw if you get a gravitum auto off if you get the root on someone you can turn that into a really aggressive play I do want him to see get Lord Dominic uh, next because Khan is getting tankier and tankier and eventually it's going to be a problem yeah I mean if you get if you are able to 
catch somebody out of position with the Ornhorn, or you're able to get a hook, right? That miracle hook that's not supposed to happen, that's when the uh, Rapid Fire Cannon is really going to be a huge asset to you because you can actually get that extra hit off, you can get that extra damage off, either force a flash or somebody out of the team fight. As we do have 15 seconds to this next Drake, and look at where the position is. This is what I'm talking about. Dom Wanky are set up this time. How do you crack this as Genji? It's going to be so difficult. Dom Wanky have to control the vision here if they clear this ward. I mean, how do you walk into this? Yep, Rascal trying to face check. The only one that really can here on the Genji side. You can see Dom Wanky, though, they lose control of the mid lane. They do now have to move away from the dragon, but the vision is established. You just need to make sure you can see Beryl cheating off towards the bottom side, making sure that he can get there get his positional situation sorted, as Heimerdinger does love to do, but Clid trying to come through and clear. You can see how dangerous it is, though, for Genji to try and crack this one open. Scatter the weak now on cooldown. Canyon thinking about this as an opportunity. Down to about half health. And his health bar is actually very important. Ruler still holding onto his ult. Ultimates everywhere for both of these teams right now. As Khan looks for the flanking option. Rascal a lot lower than he'd otherwise want to be to actually frontline in this potential team fight. They have to dodge every single shot coming through from Barrel as well, so the pacing of this is so slow, but the chip war is being won by Damwon Kia. Here comes Khan. Yeah, we'll see whether Khan can actually get into position as he avoids a lot of these skill shots. Ruler out of the way of the Scion. He's got the close range weapons as here comes the call of the Forge God. Finds a knockup, but it's only on Khan as Dawning Shadow gets all of those big old shields onto Damwon Kia. Genji still jostling right now, but the fight hasn't actually started. And now there's no call of the Forge God to try and get that advantage. Stun lands onto the Heimerdinger, but immediately barrels back up to full health. That's going to be soul point now for Damwon Kia. And they can just walk away. They don't have to fight this. They absolutely do not need to. They get out of here. This is the war of attrition. It feels like you are going to struggle to lose as Genji every Some time. Big old rockets coming through there from Barrel. Really nice sidestep. And here you see the value of the Senna as well, right? Whereas it's not as insane as something like a ser uh, Seraphine. The combination of the range advantage, which in of itself is manageable, but combined with the Senna healing, healing you can yeah. just yeah. consistently get those health bars up to full. And then once that cover the Forge God's used, you have a problem. Oh no, Ruler's in Ruler position and he's caught immediately out. How many times has he died at exactly this point of the map? It's happened so many times in really high, stressful, important situations, right? In best of fives, you get caught like this, you lose a Baron. And at least they're going to lose control of the vision here, and this is the same problem that they're going to have Genji are on this objective fight as they were on the last, is that in those War of Attrition moments, the center healing is going to add up. The good thing here, though, is that Ruler actually didn't use his flash, which sounds weird, but with everyone else up on Genji, um, even with their insane damage towards Baron, Domokia can't actually go for it, meaning that for a subsequent fight, which is what's really going to matter, because in four minutes it's going to be the Drake, yep. Baron is just relevant from any point on onwards, the moment that there's no teleport available and someone in Genji's sideline goes too deep. And if Genji don't hit those spikes and they don't find the engage, we see what happens here. Yeah, let's have a look at it one more time. Well, it, it was exactly like you said, a war of attrition, but one team has a healing ability. Yeah, one team has a healing ability. Once the Call of the Forge God comes out here, you know, as Dom One Kia, that you actually have freedom to move forward, right? And this is when you see uh, Genji, unfortunately, unable to walk any farther further because for, farther forward because they knew they had Call of the Forge God if they wanted to actually commit to the fight. But once it's gone, you kind of have to sit back and take a back seat here. There's just no one to stop the Drake. And you can see at this point, like, Yes, they could try to trade forward here because Dom and Kia did go extremely far forward onto the Drake, but if you try to chase, it's just never a race you're going to win. And then this is Ruler, unfortunately, getting caught here, farming, didn't have vision, and that's the end of that. They don't get the, the Baron, and there's actually, there was that very important ward, actually, that just now got cleared um, for Gen G, so they knew this. They weren't, you know, rushing over there to deny it. Well, five members of Genji now grouped up in this mid lane. Scion splitting on the bottom side, teleport at the ready. Damon Kia probably aware that Genji has more friends in here than are currently on vision and are going to be playing very respectfully. But a lot of pings out here from Damon Kia. They're like, why aren't they defending this turret? As uh, Khan is just uh, getting to work. I will make his way over now. And of course, nothing interesting happens on the, in the top lane matchup. Nope. Uh, unfortunately, it is a good old classic wet noodle fight. Uh, Rascal has it level 13 though, so he's gonna, or level 14 ready, so he's gonna start doling out the upgrades. And once the free item spikes are hit on Ruler and Clid, I think these fights are gonna look a lot more contentious because you need to be much more respectful of the burst and the raw damage that comes out uh, as done on Kia. However, as pointed out already, with Mountain Drake and Soul Point being secured now by Dumb on Kia, you can never ever give that up. 
and it means that it's so much easier. They can just trade the Baron and be completely fine. Yeah, and it's also so telegraphed, right? Like, DK, Darmok here, they can move either to a Baron or a Drake. Both of those options are extraordinarily good for them. However, Gen G, the only thing that is going to be super great for them to pick up at this point, <clears throat> sorry, in time, is the Baron. That's going yeah. to give them all of their advantages, whereas just one Mountain Drake, that's, uh, that's, that's one in a line that they're going to have to keep on grabbing and keep denying yeah. from Darmon Kia. And Darmon Kia with a macro advantage? I mean, they're terrifying when they don't have a macro advantage. Exactly. And, you know, right now, this is going to be a fight over vision. It's going to be a fight over positioning. Now, Dom and Kia have to take that fight on two fronts because they don't want to trade objectives. They want to be. They want to have everything, right? They want to have their cake and eat it. And they're in a position in this game where I think they should absolutely look to deny Genji from any opportunity to try to trade. The problem is the composition needs a hard setup, right? And it's hard to set up in two places at once. So they need to clear every single ward and control these choke points. And where they are right now is the timer ticks down. They wish it was actually a little bit further ahead of where it is because the time here allows Gen.G to teleport and allows them to actually try to rotate over towards the Baron and pull down one Kia apart. Yep, and now the item spike has been hit. Lord Dominic's regard coming through for Ruler. This next fight, he's going to do a lot more damage front to back than he otherwise would. Canyon and Khan do need to be a little bit more frightened. But I think that setup conversation that we've had is still so important. Khan spotted on Vision. Ruler looking to move on over his canyon, finds BDD out of position, he flashes, but he can't make it towards the Lantern. And now the box is set up, but it's just not going to be good enough. Now Rascal, he's also out of position, Clids at half health, Ruler is running for the hills, and Genji are falling apart! Oh, this is definitely going to be basically game. I mean, at this stage, you get all the objectives, right? A huge pick on to BDD, he's out of position, but also Khan was ready there to cut the rest of the team in half. Even if you don't get that BDD pick, even if he somehow miraculously gets away, that was always going to be Damwon Kia's advantage. And it is Damwon Kia making such good use of the pressure that they have, knowing that when push comes to shove, they can give up this objective, right? Like, it, it's not something that they 100% need to go for. And the attempt of Genji to collapse onto Khan is always something that is going to take so much time. And now it's a miracle steal for Clit. All the game is basically over. Oh, the over. grenade lands! He takes the, the lantern. Clit is going to make it out. But, I mean, that's where the good news ends as BDD comes on over. He's spotted out on vision. And now all we need is Heimerdinger going to move into that pit. And that Baron basically get, just gets blinked at and it dies. He's not even going to get there. Doesn't need to. And that is both Mountain Soul and the Baron on our defending world champions as Damwon Kia look to try and close the door on game one. And if you were trying to, to set up for advantages, right, for objectives, if you had to be the first one there, as we're going to watch this once again, this is BDD just splitting off with the rest of the group. Canyon catches him, and this is what happens with Udyr. There's no way out. You're not getting out of here, never, no matter what. And Khan is peeling so well for the rest of Gen G, so they can't come in and save him. There's no way to make a trade here. But yeah, if you're talking about controlling pits now with all the Baron buff that's going to come through with all the minions, the wave control you're going to have, like, how do you ever get to the objective first? How do you ever take this Elder Drake? I mean, it's going to be basically a one in a million chance. And the real problem with the composition of Gen.G is that they don't fight well in choke points. Or rather, Domon Kia's comp in choke points is unplayable, right? Because you have a Victor that is doing AoE damage. You have a, bar a Barrel on Heimerdinger that is yeah. just throwing rockets, throwing grenades. You can't get through Khan, you can't get through Canyon. They need the open space, and that's the fight we saw earlier when they can actually pull apart, right? When they can fight a straight up front to back without everyone being one person is at Wolves, one person is in the middle of the lane, they're good. But I think at this point, after that mistake, you need the most insane front to back team fight. And even then, I don't think Damon Kia are going to give you the opportunity. They have a mountain sword, it's so much harder to get that done. Yeah, and they have a Scion in the front as well. And I don't want to be that guy, you know, that talks about mistakes and things like that. But life has just been that little bit too late on so many pivotal lanterns in this game so far as once again BDD going to get stunned up but now Rascal's there gets the flash out of Showmaker Ghost is going to get knocked up but Khan has found a flank Ruler is exploding but he's still alive for now Dawning Shadow just narrowly avoided but Khan is just unkillable right now on this Zion now he finds himself a turret he's got Gargoyle Stoneplate ain't no way he's dying he's going to flash to get himself out of the way his Unleashed Power still needs to be respected but with no Ruler it's going to be so difficult for Genji to defend the base and it looks like it's going to get cracked at this push. Yeah, this is going to be the push to take the inhibitor, maybe even take the game. With no ruler here, you just don't have the damage to challenge this anymore. It's so scary. I mean, Khan basically just 1v5 that team fight. I'm I mean, just, just that tanky. I'm looking back to that trash talk video, gentlemen, where Khan was like, sit down, young men. Time to learn something. <laughs> yeah.
And uh, he's certainly doing it here today. Just no fear, standing in the front line, punishing uh, his former teammates and friends on Gen G. And it's on sign as well, right? Like they call him a sign one trick. I guess so what? I don't care. Like <laughs> yeah. I might be a sign one trick, but I'm still crushing your team. And that's what's happening here. And I'm very happy to see the return of Dumb Kia actually play controlled and play the early game well. Because I stand by my criticism in the Hawa Life series where they oh, disrespected yeah. things like the uh, the Silas, the Voli Bear. But the team that we're seeing here is much more reminiscent of the team that won Worlds that didn't have an early game gap that they kind of had to go through, which we've seen this split. It's just been from start to finish, and we see the inability of some of these champions being a problem. And look I at Ruler. He's yeah. all by himself here, right? And no one knows where Khan is. He catches him at the back. Barrel is there to actually spike the volleyball, right? Like, it's so yeah. easy. Super easy setup. And this is a long-range play from Khan. And what do you do as Jinji? You have to defend. You can't just sit back and take it. So you step forward. And the problem is that with this composition, a Filio should be way safe. A Filio should be fine, honestly. Like, you have a fresh for this reason. The moment you hear that noise, yeah. life should be there. Should be able to actually protect Ruler because one sign is actually on top. If he ever hits the, uh, the knock-up, it's just over. Like, that's the end of it. Fresh needs to be there. Well, Damon Kia, they still need to win the game. Currently, they have a 7,000 gold lead. All of their ducks are in a row. Two inhibitors down. Now it's Elder Drake that's going to be on the menu next when it comes to these neutral objectives. If they get that, I feel like that is uh, the final nail in the coffin that is uh, already getting lowered into the ground <laughs> is what it kind of feels like. And Damon yeah. Kia, they're not even wanting to waste that time. One and a half minutes, they'd have to wait. But there is a very juicy inhibitor turret here that uh, Ghost is just chipping away at pretty comfortably here. Look at Khan on the flank as well. He catches Four the million dead. health, gentlemen. He's just so big on this Scion. I mean, this is basically a game you can't lose to Stam Wan Kia. You could just slowly push this forward, and if anything goes wrong, you just walk away and take Elder. But you don't even have to do that. You've got a third inhibitor down now. And a lot of the potential that we talked about for Gen.G is in the burst. But burst is irrelevant. They have a Mountain Drake, uh, or Mountain Soul Rider with two Drakes. Like, you're not bursting through anyone here. Yeah, I think if... I think they might be able to get through Scion's... Soul Furnace. Uh, no, and then uh, uh, maybe, maybe Stone Plate. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, no, not Stone Plate. If you're, <laughs> if you're not giving him a... Uh, come on, give, no. give them a little credit, okay? That's a free item of fellas. He can get through the Stone Plate. All right. Okay, Dom okay. Okay. Try, try, Dominic trying to win this game with minions right now. And, okay, you get an ult. Yeah, but that is going to be a stopwatch. Rascal not going to be able to find too much joy there. Beryl going to get healed back up as Rascal has to Searing Charge his way out. Life not going to be so lucky as Ghost grabs that first kill. Collateral damage to try and create distance there. But clear as Canyon gets stunned up but doesn't care at all. Nexus start one, two, down. Nexus now the focus for Damwon Kia as they make a statement in game number one in this spring final. Genji relegated to their fountain. Damwon Kia often want to have a bit of fun at this stage, but it looks like the Nexus is just going to get taken down and they'll move us straight to game number two. Very clean game here from Damwon Kia. Both teams going for a scaling composition, but the execution for Damwon Kia was just better. They were fortunate. They were able to get that